Now, you may have been to Japan, but the chances of bumping into an ethnic Ainu person would be very slim. They are the earliest settlers in Hokkaido, um, but have faced decades of systemic suppression. Japan is spending millions of dollars to support the Ainu and their culture, but fears of discrimination remain, with their language on the brink of extinction. Well, CNA is Michio Ishida with this report. Iran karate. Hi. Just a simple greeting in the Ainu language reveals the rich history of the indigenous group who live in northern Japan. Kenyu Yamamaru works at the National Ainu Museum in Shiragoi town in Hokkaido. His greeting, Iran Karapte, is used in his hometown, but Ainu elsewhere might not know it. Experts think Ainu are descendants of the Jomon people, who inhabited Japan around 11,000 to 6,000 BC. They settled in Hokkaido, the north of Honshu, as well as the Kurel Islands and Sakhalin. The Ainu language split into several regional dialects. There is no written form, which makes it challenging to pass down. So what's the population of Ainu? Scholars say it's not clear. There is a once-in-seven-year survey conducted by the Ainu Association. It's on Ainus in Hokkaido. In 2017, they counted 13,118. Compared to seven years before that, it's 3,668 less. Analysts think there are actually more Ainus than on record. Many do not wish to make public of their Ainu heritage. The Ainu were persecuted in Japan, and their customs and traditions outlawed by its new Meiji government in the late 19th century. Fearing prejudice, some stopped speaking Ainu. Even today, many hide their identity and never tell their children about their Ainu root. For Miyuki Muraki, the label of being Ainu haunted her throughout her childhood. Sixty-four-year-old Miss Muraki hardly speaks the language. Those who can are now few and far between, which is why UNESCO has designated it as critically endangered. The National Ainu Museum and Park, also called Upopoi, an Ainu term for let's sing, is trying to revive the language. Signboards are written in Japanese characters that match Ainu phonetics, a new vocabulary created using loanwords for terms that do not exist in Ainu. There are also activities to promote the Ainu language. Here, Mr. Yamamaru is performing a piece from the Ainu's ancient storytelling tradition called Yukar. The 30-year-old learned it from a recording left behind by his grandfather. Teaching Ainu was not Mr. Yamamoto's dream. He was in high school dropout. Ainu in general have less education and job opportunities, but he was able to take Ainu language classes as a child and never faced much discrimination. Mr. Yamamaru turned his life around when his late father Ikuo, an advocate for Ainu culture, suggested he take up a three-year course for Ainu on their heritage. His father died suddenly from a heart attack before he could see the change in Mr. Yamamaru. And Hokkaido which is starting to awaken to its Ainu roots. At Hokkaido University in Sapporo, a staff shuttle began running announcements in Ainu in January. The next stop is School of Engineering. The idea was inspired by a similar program in another Hokkaido town. 
and it's driving up interest in the language. In 2008, the Diet passed a resolution to recognize the Ainu as indigenous people of Japan, following a UN declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples. In an atonement of sorts for the past, Japan is now pouring millions of dollars on Ainu-related policies like Upopoi, which has drawn more than a million visitors since it opened in 2020. But it cannot reverse a history of forced assimilation. Ainu, like Mr. Yamamaru, who embraced their identity, remain an exception. Beyond a flashy showcase, experts say what the Ainu need is for the public to be informed about the dark truth of discrimination and a space where they can live without prejudice and reclaim their language and identity. Michio Ishida. And for more, CNA's Michio Ishida joins us now from Tokyo. So, Michio, we've mentioned that UNESCO has designated the Ainu language as critically endangered. We've heard there that uh, you've written about, you've said about how there is no written form of the language. Many people they still don't want to make public of their heritage. What else do you think is, is, is that makes it so hard to keep this culture alive? Well, for one, it's because it's not a written language. There is no written record. Uh, what even uh, makes it even more difficult to preserve the language? Um, even those above um, the age of 60 who I met told me that their grandparents chanted in the language, but they did not try to speak it. Well, um, as I said in my report, the Meiji government since the um, 1900s tried to assimilate, 19th century tried to assimilate the Ainu to the uh, Japanese society, educating them in what the Ainu called Wajin language and culture. To the people of Ainu, anything Japanese which was not Ainu is still called Wajin. Now, the people of Ainu were banned from carrying on with their own customs and tradition. However, the Ainu language was not banned, but afraid of facing discrimination, they stopped speaking their own language. And because of discrimination, I've been told by many academics and Ainu people that um, many who had Ainu blood did not want to be known they had Ainu blood. And so 0.7% of Ainu people speak their ancestral language, that's all. And this is according to a survey by the prefecture of Hokkaido. And um, those in the area I stayed in Shiraoi town was pretty open about their Ainu heritage compared to Ainu in other parts of Hokkaido because they have an Ainu community. And many know each other from their gra grandparents' times, for example. But when I asked them how many with Ainu heritage worked at the uh, National Ainu Museum and Park, or Upopoi, which I uh, covered, uh, they didn't know. Uh, they would answer when asked about themselves, but not about their colleagues, indicating it's still a sensitive matter to talk about. Oh, that's um, such a shame. Um, and, it, and, and the government is making efforts to try and bolster uh, in terms of trying to revive the Ainu language and the culture. But, uh, you know, Mitchell, the thing is, how worried um, are you that this is uh, the language and the culture could go extinct? You know, the loss of language is a loss of tradition, culture, and knowledge, as academics say, which means a loss of information to unveil the history of humankind. So reviving the language to study its tradition and culture is vital. Now, the foundation of Ainu culture, which is backed by Hokkaido government, says it's only around the 15th century that historic materials mention the Ainu. They were fishing, hunting, and picking plants, and were active in trade. Uh, because there was no written form of history by the Ainus themselves, uh, there's still so much research needed. And historians know they had a big presence in Hokkaido. They also lived in parts of Sakhalin and the Kurils and part of North 
northern Honshu, which is the main Japanese island. Now, the Tokugawa shogunate mistreated them as laborers, according to the foundation. Then in the late 1800s, they were forced to assimilate with the Japanese society. But the game changer was when UNESCO, United Nations, declared the rights of the indigenous people in 2007. The Japanese government came under pressure to recognize the Ainu. And to promote the Ainu culture, the National Ainu Museum and Park, Upoboy, opened in 2020. A huge budget's been all allocated to this park, and analysts say it's paved the way to encourage more to study and preserve the language and tradition of the Ainu people. So aside from those uh, initiatives that you have already mentioned, what else is being done to breathe uh, new life into the language as well as the community and, um, I suppose, to keep uh, discrimination at bay? Let me go back a little bit. Well, Shirao Town, which I uh, featured, for instance, started a small folk museum of the Ainu in 1967 and has been regularly holding traditional performances, hoping that uh, people will come and watch and gain understanding of the Ainu tradition and hear their language. And that's the predecessor of Upupoi. Uh, there are Ainu-related museums actually all over Hokkaido displaying arts and crafts of the Ainu uh, of that particular region. Now, as to promoting the language itself, a local radio station in Hokkaido broadcasts the Ainu language, um, and a YouTuber of Ainu heritage is involved in this radio with this radio station. Um, all over Hokkaido, uh, school children are distributed booklets about the Ainu. And in particular, in Biratori town in Hokkaido, which is another area with a huge Ainu community, uh, from this year, they started to teach Ainu language in the local elementary school. Uh, that's a promising sign. Uh, but there is still a lack of promoting nationwide awareness of the Ainu and its dying language. In fact, when I told my friends and relatives in Japan I was doing a story on the Ainu language, the Ainu people, they reacted with surprise. Uh, they're not familiar with the language, let alone, alone who the Ainu people are. Oh, well, uh, Mitchu, I'm going to look out for those uh, Ainu museums when I'm in Hokkaido the next time. Thanks so very much uh, for that report, Mitchu Ishida, there in Tokyo. And, of course, you can catch the full CNA Correspondent episode on the CNA.Asia and on YouTube as well.